Back in 2020, I started making some random videos here on YouTube about photography. It was during all the lockdowns and the whole reason for me making those videos was simple. It was for me to be less bored at home. I never anticipated the videos to go anywhere. But what I wasn't aware of at the time was by me making those videos, it was the start of my YouTube journey. However, I do have a question. How in the world did I get here? Because if I could be honest, I am still terrible at this. I am no good at speaking to a camera. I'm really self-conscious about what I say to a camera. It takes me like two or three takes sometimes to do so. It maybe even more than that because I'm so worried that it just doesn't sound right or I'm gonna be heavily judged by it. And on top of that as well, I trip over my own words constantly. This is the most amount of words I've ever said without tripping over anything. I'm also too fast at talking sometimes and I am still trying to sort that out, but you would have thought after three years I'd be pretty good at that. And on top of that, I'm quite socially awkward at times. And also for the first couple of years of doing YouTube, I didn't have a Scooby on how to run a YouTube channel. How did I, taking all that into consideration, get here? I'm not too sure myself. I must be doing something right. But what I know for sure is this wouldn't be possible without your support. I know it's cheesy. I know people say it all the time, but it really does mean the world to me. And it has just been an incredible journey over the last three years. And I can't wait to continue doing this journey, but now I'm doing it on a full-time basis. So to each and every one of you, Thank you so much. So what's this update all about? Well, you know the first bit of news, I am now doing YouTube full time. The second bit of news is I have decided to hand in my notice for this apartment and I will be moving back with my parents for the foreseeable future. And some of you guys might be thinking at this point, but why? Well, that's a longer answer, but I will try and keep it as condensed as possible. But in order to start telling it, we need to go back to January 3rd, 2023. This was the first day back in the office after the new year and I was brought into the main office by the remaining manager of the company and I was told I was being made redundant from my job role as a videographer and I couldn't have been more happy. For context, I started working for the company in October of 2021. It was a startup production company in the city of Leeds and whilst the first few months were really good working on some great projects, after that I started to fall out of favour with the company. This was due to poor management, unrealistic workloads, impossible deadlines that all resulted in me being so stressed out and burnt out creatively that I had to take sick leave on more than one occasion. And on top of that, they also damaged a lot of my own personal equipment because the company either couldn't afford their own gear or were too lazy to buy their own gear. So they bought a Sony a7S III, but the expectation was they'd be using my lenses, my filters, my gimbals and everything else. And they agreed that any equipment that was damaged at the workplace, they would pay for, but they never did. So I was out of pocket with all the equipment that they actually damaged. Now I was planning on leaving the company at some point in 2023. I was just waiting until I had a little bit more money in the bank so I could have a cushion. So if I was out of work for a couple of months, I wasn't gonna to be too desperate for rent or anything like that. Because at the time, YouTube wasn't paying enough to even cover the overheads. So whilst I was rejoiced and so happy to be leaving that workplace, I was a bit buggered about the income. So I really saw two options in front of me. I either go full time into a similar sector or I attempt doing freelancing. The only problem with freelancing is whilst I'm good behind the camera, I've not really got clientele experience and working in a freelance world. So I decided to put off my decision on which path I should take until I returned from Sweden which I went to in February. So whilst I was over there, I was able to meet up with my good mate, Carl Watts, and both of us were able to hang out for a few days with Peter Lindgren. Just a little side note here, this was one of the most rad trips I've ever been on, hanging out with other content creators, shooting some cool stuff, playing around with some cool gear, getting driven around in an almighty pickup truck, and visiting some beautiful places in Sweden, including a beautiful er, uh, which is still my favorite Swedish word. I also tried some whiskey. Cheers, Peter. Bottoms up. <clears throat> Burns a bit. Burns a tap. Whiskey's. That's a kick up the ass right there. <laughs> <laughs> so whilst we were hanging out in Sweden doing all this epic creating and exploring, I was able to ask Peter for some advice about trying to make YouTube a full-time thing because I had no idea. And the information Peter was giving me was so immensely insightful and helpful that it made me realize the third path option would be doing YouTube if I put into action what he said. And that is one of the reasons why I'm now able to do it full time. So Peter, 
If you are watching this, dude, I just want to say a massive thanks for all the help. And next time we see each other, I'm going to have to buy your beer or something like that to say cheers. Now, the other reason that I was able to start doing YouTube full time was because of my Amazon affiliate links. And I have to give a massive shout out here to Kyle Watts. Because one evening we were talking about Amazon affiliate links and I said to him, oh yeah, I hardly make any money on them. And he looked at me a bit puzzled and we had a look at my account and we established that me being the dumb idiot that I am, I hadn't set them up correctly. So I was only affiliated for the UK market, which meant I was only making pennies per month and I was missing out on other markets like the US. So we decided to close my account and open up a new one and see what would happen. And what happened, well, I'm gonna be completely transparent. It took me over the threshold of making enough per month to start pursuing YouTube full time. So when I arrived back in the UK, I started to get prepared. I started to get ready for the transition of doing YouTube full time. And since March of 2023, I have been doing just that. And you know what? I am absolutely loving it. The best thing is because I've got so much more time to dedicate towards YouTube, I'm coming up with so many more ideas. I have got a lot of topic discussions and gear reviews and ideas for content that I wanna do in the future, not just with POVs, but tutorials, editing, just so much. There's just so much because I'm able to put more time into it. I can't wait. The future is looking great. And speaking of the future, why am I moving home? What's going on there? Well, for one, it's 2023. And I think nowadays it's a lot more socially acceptable for young people. I'm still young, I'm only 24. People in their 20s to be living with their parents and bless them, my parents have agreed to put up with me for another couple of years. So honestly, I'm moving back in with my parents for one simple reason, and that is to save money. And I am planning on using some of those savings to invest it back into the channel and also enjoy it a little bit, do a bit more traveling. I have got a huge bucket list on places I'd love to visit and hopefully in the next couple of years, I'll be able to visit quite a lot of them. And maybe in the future, I can get the van I've always wanted to. A small one, convert it, do UK road trips, European road trips, I think that would be pretty rad. But the ultimate aim, it's a big goal, it's a big objective, but that is to save for a deposit on a house and get my own property maybe in the next couple of years or so. That's the aim. Because as we know, it is so hard these days to try and get on the property ladder. And when you're renting your own property, it makes it just 10 times harder, maybe even probably 100 times harder. And with me doing YouTube full time, I'm not working in Leeds anymore. As long as I have a studio space to make my videos, I can make videos pretty much anywhere. So it just makes sense for me. And I am also looking forward to getting out of the city that I'm living in because I currently live in the city of Bradford. And if you're from the UK, you probably know why that's a bad thing. But if you don't, well, let me just put it to you this way. The best way I could describe Bradford as a city is it's a shithole, putting it politely. One of, if not the worst city in the UK. I mean, the first day of me moving in here, my car got broken into. That really set the tone of where I'd moved to. It was a mistake to move in this city, but whilst I was working in Leeds, this was all I could afford. And I am gonna miss this apartment. I love the aesthetics of it, I love the size of it, and it's been a really good place for me to make content. And if I could take it with me, I would. The theme tune of Bradford, that. Now, one thing I want to mention here is my new YouTube studio space. Some of you actually might remember when I used to live with my parents, I made videos in my bedroom and it was a really cramped, really tight space. It was really difficult to actually make content in and I needed somewhere dedicated so I could just sit down, get in front of camera and make videos. And we've actually come up with a solution, but it hasn't been built yet. But by the time I'm home, hopefully it will be up and by mid-September, it will be all fully ready to go and I can give you a studio tour. But let me just say this, I think it's possibly gonna be one of the most unique YouTube studio setups you've possibly ever seen. But yeah, that's the gist of it and I don't think I've forgotten to mention anything, but I do wanna apologize because I feel like this update video has been way too long, but hopefully it's given you a bit of an insight on where the channel was at, where it's been at and where it is going for the future. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited for this next chapter. So finally today, I would just like to say again, a massive thank you to each and every one of you for the continued support. Words can't describe how much I appreciate it. I feel so privileged, lucky, honored, whatever the word is, that I am able to pursue something that I love on the daily and share it with so many amazing content creators, up and coming photographers, veterans at photography, whoever you might be, wherever you are, 
I appreciate each and every one of you and none of this would be possible without the support that you give me and yeah it just it's just incredible this community just means the world to me and hopefully in the future I'll be able to meet a lot more of you guys in the future hopefully I can continue entertaining inspiring teaching and just having a really good time of it all for the foreseeable future so yeah I'm terrible at this kind of thing but it really does mean a lot and I just want to say Thank you to each and every one of you once again. But I guess the last thing I should say today is until next time, create, explore, and inspire. And I'll see you in the next one.